Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Yelai, the place where you get your daily dose of inspiration for entrepreneurship. And today we have with us Mr. Sumit uh, Savarwal, who is the CEO of Team Lease Group, uh, which is India's largest HR tech platform. And if you are working somewhere, probably you would have heard from Team Lease Group at some point of time. Um, hi Sumit, welcome to Yelai. Uh, hi Priya, many thanks for having me uh, on this platform. I would uh, request you to introduce yourself to our audience, please. Uh, so, uh, I lead uh, Team Lease HR Tech Limited uh, as a as a CEO of uh, of the business. Uh, been here for about uh, a year, uh, now close to a year. Uh, we've we started our journey uh, as Team Lease HR Tech Limited uh, more than a decade ago, and and uh, then when we were progressing with uh we had taken some small steps uh and now you know we are one of the india's largest hr tech product company um in my previous uh, assignments uh, i have led uh, businesses for many global and indian multinational companies which have grown out to be multi billion dollar organizations uh and uh, led teams that have created and unlocked a uh, multi billion dollar value for the shareholders uh, uh, i've been also uh, uh, leading uh, some of the global companies like the ocs group like eon you its asia pacific business uh, uh, finance com 100 years plus finance companies in like equifax uh, and also uh, spent a longer lot of time with you know setting up and scaling up uh, a bpm ites business uh, known as ages where when I joined that company, we were a few hundred people, loss-making company. We were burning about $1 million cash per month. And uh, over a period of eight, eight and a half years, uh, we grew to a $1.5 billion organization with a strong 65,000 workforce and a double-digit EBIT. So uh, uh, a journey of uh, organic growth as well as uh, inorganic growth. And during my early days in my career, uh, I have led teams uh, for companies like Centurion Bank, for Godrej Group, uh, for small other, uh, uh, you know, ITES companies uh, across marketing, across operations, across account management, uh, with a complete PNL responsibility. Uh, an engineer and an MBA by academic qualification, uh, I studied international business from Paris. And uh, I was the only student in my batch to be given 100% scholarship from government of France. And um, I had excellent mentorship and uh, uh, an excellent, uh, you know, environment there, fabulous program. Uh, I've been honored with several leadership awards and accolades uh, during this journey, like the Chairman's Trophy, you know, Managing Director of the Year, Visionary Leader of the Year. And I also have an honorary PhD from a university in South Korea. So... Uh, overall, you know, uh, Priya, I'm a people's person. I have a very strong focus on uh, business growth, innovative solutioning, and operational efficiencies. Uh, so this is, in a nutshell, uh, uh, my brief journey. Got you. Uh, before we start talking about your life, uh, tell us a little bit about your role at uh, Team Lease. You are the CEO, and CEO is the uh, captain of the ship. Uh, and um, he or she decide, decides the course of the uh, large corporation for next few years uh, and maybe the future of the company. So what it takes to become a CEO of a large corporation? Can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, yeah. So uh, essentially, uh, if being a leader is all, is about understanding people, and also getting more leaders, uh, grooming more leaders in your team. Uh, also, understand also the uh, the kind of vision that you that one needs to have, uh, and a long term vision, which is how do we not not a five years or ten years vision, but where do we want to take this organization, say twenty five years, uh, that direction today that we take that is the top company from twenty five years from now. So those the long term vision is very very important, and then during the course of that that journey, how do we develop leaders in the organization, whether it's an operations leader, whether it's a sales leader or a technology leader, 
to bring the best in people uh so uh, you know getting the right people for the right seats then uh, giving them the right opportunities empowering them motivating them mentoring them throwing challenges at them and then when they solve it you know making them feel like winners um uh, and uh, that's that's certainly that that is clearly the role of a uh, of a leader. and i take my uh, priya i take my uh, motivation from uh, napoleon you know mm-hmm. uh, when uh, take uh, let the people get grounded in the reality but show them the vision and you know show them the hope and the and the aspiration to grow so that's where uh, you know you build you go from strength to strength and ensure that you know you you build uh, brick by brick a, a, a great organization you said uh, about you you spoke about finding right people for the right seats or right roles and uh, it is also the same thing team lease as a organization does for other companies as well so one fundamental question i i want to ask you is how to ensure that uh, let's say you you are a company who is searching for a, a person to match a role and uh, the company is searching on different platforms like uh, linkedin and uh, other smaller platforms uh, they'll get a list of candidates who might be a fit from the skill point of view probably interview happens and uh, then you find uh, from all aspects there are five candidates but how do you ensure that the one candidate you select is the right guy what 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 is the process that goes behind um uh, can you tell us from a leadership point of view sure 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 priya so one is certainly uh, you know the skill of the person uh, is 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 very very important so the competencies that a person is carrying is 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 super is super important that's the first uh, thing then second comes the communication skills uh, priya uh, then then comes the courage and confidence that a person has in his abilities to you know uh, to demonstrate those those skills and uh, engage with with other other people who he will serve or who he will lead so that is that is very very important and then the right kind of uh, the right kind of ethics whether the person is uh, is is having is demonstrating the right ethics will he be you know uh, will he take the right decisions which which may be, which are as per the you know uh, the right business practices or he will just go by you know uh, by shortcuts so all that is all that is something which is uh, which 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 we see uh, in a holistic approach now when we do this we also uh, take a, a great uh, uh, you know leverage from the technology that we have you know in terms of uh, you know the entire job matching which is there because if the if the skills are listed or a person is saying then you know the whether the fitment is there and that is done for the short listing one is that second is uh, priya in terms of the uh, once the short listing is done then uh, are we uh, capturing the right uh, experience which is fitment to this particular role how much of fitment is is it 90% 85% a uh, very few uh, rarest of the rare is uh, 100% job fitment but do we get you know very close to the job fitment so once that is done then understanding the softer aspects which is you know through psychometric assessments through other behavioral questionnaires that we that we administer uh, to the to the right candidates once that is done we are also capturing the uh, uh, you know the the feedback through the bots which also capture the micro expressions for example what you say is all, and how what do you actually mean that so that gets captured by the micro uh, you know micro expressions that a candidate is is having when he is you know when he is giving an interview finally uh, the uh, validation of his documents because we got something known as digi lockers with us wherein we can access the data uh which is in the public domain of a particular candidate for example the aadhar data the kind of you know background checks data that is already available in the ecosystem uh, the kind of kyc data which is there so that the candidate doesn't have to give all that again uh, all all over again when he is you know when he is getting interviewed and finally the the right kind of you know p- package in terms of cash component the benefits component the 
so other software aspects whether it's a hybrid workforce or it's a completely work from office is a gig worker all that is certainly uh, very much uh, you know put in place and then a person gets onboarded so it's a 15 to 18 step procedure uh, priya that that happens and at team leads we leverage the technology a state of the art ats applicant tracking system to ensure that you know the time from beginning to uh, to the selection is optimized for the particular candidate hmm. uh now that you have you know talked a little bit about ats and all uh i i would uh, love to explore the uh, a few few pointers on how recruitment happens today and what is the you know most adv- advanced version that you use at team leads to hire a candidate uh, and this is uh, uh, um, the can you can you cover it in the context of uh, startup hiring because a lot of startup founders who are listening to us they they are looking for the right talent they but they're just not understanding which are the platforms to explore or how how it should be conducted what is the process behind it? sure sure so uh, for a startup it's very very important to get the right talent at the right price point with the right kind of motivation so whether a person is a right talent but he doesn't have a motivation to work in a startup that also won't uh, won't won't uh, be that successful right. so uh, first it is very very important to you know get the right kind of job description and job description is beyond skills it's also the software aspects it's also the motivation it's also how the person is seeing himself uh, five years to 10 years down the line so when you artic we help our clients in articulating a very clear job description and that is done by the advanced uh, algorithms and ai that is built into our systems uh, priya so when you say that you know i want a jo- i want a node js developer or a node js leader technical leader so we will come with you know a few a sample job description plus a few questions which a particular person can speak to the bot and it gets auto, it's get modified so that whatever is the job requirement it actually gets articulated at least in the in the job description very very clearly so that's the starting point um, and uh, you know well begin is half done so once that is done then this job description is Uh, fed into our search engine mm-hmm. and our search engine actually talks to various um, uh, platforms like uh, you know the job boards some of the social media platforms also uh, which are there and also some of the some of the places you know like and where where people uh, you know uh, publish the resumes etc so all those is it done and a long list is created and very quickly a fitment is done of the skills and the software aspects and we create a we create a long um, you know a, a, a list of interviews which is done now sometimes what happens priya is that you know people are not comfortable in 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 giving an interview at the working hour someone says that you know i want to get an interview at say 8 9 o'clock in the night 10 o'clock in the night mm-hmm. we can't expect our recruiters to log in at 10 o'clock in the night and take an interview of the person right so we've got something known as a bot interview so so the bot it initiates uh, the discussion with the candidate uh, understands which channel of communication whether it's a phone call or it's an sms or a whatsapp is most convenient for a candidate to have an interaction with and then it uh, it further you know schedules an a bot interview at the time which is convenient to the candidate now all this is happening if in a in a very short span of time because it is the entire process is automated uh right now and once the initial level of interview is done then there is a shortlist created of top 3 for example if one person is required top 3 people who will be most suitable and that is shared with the with the client and then they can or or the startup founder he can or the startup person who is recruiting and he can rec- he, instead of going through this entire hassle of um, shortlisting searching speaking he gets a very crisp uh three uh, people whom we can do the final round and he can onboard so it saves a lot of time for the uh, for the startup uh, it saves a lot of cost for the candidate it's an excellent experience which happens and uh, eventually the fitment which is most important is being taken care of because if you are getting the right person for the right seat definitely when he becomes an employee he will be more engaged and his chances of being with the organization for a long time increases multifold got you uh 
uh, now let us dive a little deep into uh, your uh, personal journey as a leader. Uh, tell us a little bit about your early life prior to uh, working anywhere. How was your childhood and how did your education happen? And any glimpses of leadership in your early life? Yeah, sure, sure. So I've uh, I've been always been a uh, you know uh, a very academically oriented uh, uh, you know student uh, in my student life. Uh, however, uh, uh, during my schooling days and my higher schooling, especially, uh, I I came to a realization that only uh, knowledge of books will not help in developing a uh, in developing an overall well-rounded personality. So I actually went into my um, uh, uh, my work life and my uh, uh, in my early in my in my early college days. Uh, itself. Uh, so I used to do a part-time work um, in, you know, in various, um, in various, um, you know, places, uh, help assisting, uh, you know, sales, uh, majorly sales leaders in collecting the data uh, in, uh, you know, in very, very, uh, in very, very uh, smaller uh, ways in which I could understand the way in which the corporate, uh, corporate life uh, is and that really gave me a um, uh, gave me a lot of insights into what we learn in the books versus what we are actually doing. Uh, there is a lot more that we need to build upon that. Mm -hmm. So this I realized uh, when I entered into engineering uh, in my engineering college, uh, and then I thought, you know, uh, is in, after entering, I thought, is engineering really the right choice that I've taken in my in my career? Uh, but uh, then engineering taught me a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, log logics in which you know you you can put your thoughts in in place. You can navigate a lot of processes and see that in a scientific way how can a business um, problem can be addressed and it can be got to a logical conclusion. So that uh, uh, although you know the uh, the chemical engineering the textile chemical engineering that I did. I uh, in in really I did not work in any kind of a uh, engineering environment, but it taught me a lot of uh, a lot of logic building things, a lot of problem solving abilities logically, and a scientific approach of process based approach of doing things. Uh, so that was that was what it influenced. And, and parallelly, um, Priya, I was also working on and off with uh, with a few organizations, uh, you know assisting them uh, in 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 various small small projects which were which were happening and that really gave me an insight that only engineering will not help me in actually making it to the beginning of the of the journey mm. so then i started uh, then i did immediately after my engineering i did my uh, masters which is my my mba in marketing and systems um, i was fortunate enough to be given uh, a 100% scholarship by government of France and I did my part of my uh, studies from Paris where I got an international exposure and there also you know we did our uh, uh, a lot of work uh, for some of the European companies being in being in Europe that again gave an a different exposure how the work is done in different side of the you know the other side of the world mm -hmm. and when I came back to India uh, rather than you know finding, uh, you know, many of my classmates went to uh, some of the banks, some of the consulting firms, some of the uh, other traditional FMCG firms. But mm -hmm. I took at it, and this is like about 20 years plus back, I took a very, very different approach. I said that, you know, I want to go into an emerging industry. And uh, at that time, they used to, ITES was not the coined word for the, uh, for, the uh, for the industry. It was, mm -hmm. uh, GE had begin the call center culture in India. And when I did my engineering and my MBA and joined a ITES firm, my uh, parents and my relatives were very, very surprised that why do you need to do so much studies for joining a call center? Mm. So, you know, that was a different approach that I took. And I'm really happy that, you know, I, I took that approach, uh, you know, in that because uh, the kind of mentorship that I got there, the kind of, you know, independence that I got there to drive business units in itself, to drive projects in itself, to manage midterm teams. I mean, imagine a person out of out of a uh, 
MBA college and he's, you know, he's driving team of around 400 people. And that's like a, you know, and a mentoring, which is, which is being done, you know, so that gave me a lot of head start into my early days and into becoming my, into becoming a PNL leader right from day one, rather than, you know, going in, in a traditional way, going in a, a management trainee somewhere, understanding, you know, all, all that, uh, all that stuff. So, although it was, you know, practical real time learning that I got and I thought that, you know, that's, that's the, the, and then I built upon it, you know, I, I was very, very careful that I will want to get exposure into, you know, the finance side of the business, which then I joined Centurion Bank and then inorganic and organic way of, way of growth and building up the PNLs. And then uh, uh, after successfully turning around and making ages uh, and creating value, then I took um, uh, as to, took over as a CEO of Aon U8, and then the rest is you know uh, history. That's that's how the uh, the journey was journey is uh, Priya. Got you. You said you are a people person, a people's person, and uh, from your very first job, you were managing a big team. Uh, that means there was something fundamental in you that uh, helped you in um, succeeding in these roles. Uh, something about people management or uh, probably interpersonal skills. So would like to know what it takes to manage people. How can you successfully manage people uh, and that too in a larger scale? Because a lot of startup founders, they do not have, they do not possess the skill. They may have technology skills or business skills to, you know, uh, find uh, market opportunities and, you know, capitalize on it. But people management is a different ball game altogether. Tell us about it. What can we learn from you? Sure. Priya, um, many a times we see that, you know, that uh, there is a person who comes to an office and he leaves his real self on the door of the office. And then he comes and mechanically works in the office. And then when he goes back, he picks that up and then he becomes the same person whom he, when he was in, uh, when he came to the office. Yeah. So when I was seeing that, that is really a person getting those, you know, those skills and, and those, mm. his true self to the work uh, or not, I realized that many of the people mm. uh, were not, uh, were not doing that. Mm. Right. So uh, what was the trigger that may, wanted to make mm. uh, that, that we can do that we can make people comfortable and get their real self to work and then only they'll be they'll they'll be feeling related to the work that they are doing they'll be they'll they'll not only get their mind to work but also they'll get their heart to work that was very very important for them to get engaged engaged with the organization engaged with the role that they are doing engaged with their fellow uh, you know teammates with their teammates and their seniors and you know and their and their peers so understanding that trigger making them feel comfortable and uh, uh, from a uh, from a level of heart or no, not only the mind was something that was what that was very 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 critical now how do you do that now you go beyond uh, beyond a work discussion with them for example uh, i still remember we in one of the organizations that we are working with we had a lot of working a uh, uh, lot of women who workforce who was there and they had an issue in terms of uh, and this is i mean i'm talking about about 10 years, uh, 10, 10 years back. And they had an issue that, you know, uh, they wanted to rush back because they had smaller children uh, to take care of at home. Right. So we arranged a, a, a crash facility in, 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 in the office itself so that, you know, they can get the children to, to work and then they can ensure that, you know, that they're well taken care of. They can meet them in their breaks. All that was done. And Priya, the, the attrition rate there drastically decreased. Yeah. Uh, because of that and we even if you know earlier we were we were giving a double digit um, increments and then also we were we were facing skyrocketing attrition after we started these initiatives we were we were giving a very nominal uh, you know uh, increment but still people didn't want to leave us for five years six years seven years also uh, even if they were working at the same level so you know so that that triggers uh, were, were very very different uh, there were a set of people who were coming from a satellite town and then we ensured that you know we give a, a home drop and home pickup facility for them it was so convenient uh, to them that you know they didn't even they didn't even want to leave the 
you know uh, to leave so all these initiatives which touch their lives you know uh, is, is 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 very very important and and understanding those triggers and as a leader you need to personally ensure that those initiatives get executed on the ground for the people and it's meaningful execution which uh, makes a difference to their to their lives then only they'll get the their true selves to work and they will give their 100% and uh, that's the that's one of the one of the things that that is. also priya understanding the aspirations of the people is very very important mm -hmm. in a in a in a professional environment some people would want to uh, yeah, would would are getting motivated by money as a uh, as a uh, you know as a trigger but some people would also get motivated by the respect that you give them right or uh, some people would get a good would, would would be triggered by their involvement in the key decisions that you would uh, that that they would want become a key team member for them money won't matter for them uh, uh, you know uh, maybe uh, uh, other things won't matter a designation won't matter but if you involve them in the key decision making they will be there uh, they'll be satisfied at the end of the day right. so when we did all this we found that uh, we found that uh, the triggers for various people are different uh, at, at that point in time and then when i uh, when i during my you know uh, uh, later part of my hr technology days i built all that learning priya in the technology so I, we have incorporated that in the pulse surveys and uh, which we administer from time to time with our people and we are able to understand the triggers for motivation and uh, i'll be i was very surprised that you know with the changing like pre pandemic the triggers were different in pa pandemic the pr triggers were different and post pandemic the triggers were different so how do we align how do an hr department aligns its hr strategy or a intervention strategy with respect to those triggers a certain set of uh, you know people display and then make them motivated get that kind of fitment i mean that was that's really uh, you know exciting uh, exciting things what i experienced earlier how i'm able to translate into technology and make a tangible difference to the employees uh, is is really satisfying experience uh, uh, for for me also as a professional uh, priya gotcha my final question what is the meaning of entrepreneurship for you how would you define the term entrepreneur so uh, I, if i if i have to put uh, put it in a very simple word it is it is uh, creating a, a meaningful experience for the stakeholders and stakeholders can be your employees it can be your, it can be the the government it can be the the other people who are using your product it can be of course the shareholders uh, definitely the returns to shareholders and uh, the community at large so that's how i will define an entrepreneurship awesome so on this note we will close the session thanks for your time sumit and it was a great pleasure to have you on our platform thank you priya it's wonderful interacting with you thank you